Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jen from Jen Tea. At Jen Tea, we specialize in fine tasting great Chinese tea. And in this channel, we share information about Chinese tea and its culture. So if you are also a tea lover, please consider subscribing. With the recent passing of the queen, a sad time for many around the world. What better way to honor her memory than think about some happy times in her life? And as a tea channel, what do we have in common with the queen? Pretty much only black tea. Let's remember some black teas that warm the queen's heart and her teacup together. Talking about black tea, you just cannot skip Lapsam Suchong. It's a stable in the royal tea cabinet. Lapsam Suchong is the very first black tea in the world with over 400 years history. In the 17th and 18th century, it was a luxury goods for only the upper class. This is the tea that literally shaped the international tea commerce. Grow in the Wei Mountains, this tea contributed greatly to the China-Britain trade deficit in the 17th-18th century. It helped cause the phenomena in China that the silver is actually cheaper than the money. So to change the phenomena of losing silver to China, uh, the Britain decided to export opium. Later on, China said, no more opium, no more opium house. <laughs> yes, nowadays we're familiar with tea house, coffee shop. At that time, there were opium house where you can die in or take out. Well, what China said is bad for the people. And Britain thinks, hey, freedom of commerce, let us teach you a lesson. So they sent some troops. Voila, first opium war. It was a very different time. At that time, tea played such an important role in world economy as well as politics. The fellow American tea lovers know that all too well. What tea did the Boston Tea Party dump? Well, according to William Euchers in his O About Tea, there are black teas like Bohi, Suzhong, and Gongfu, and green teas like Songluo as well as Xichun, and the majority of it is black tea. Kimen black tea was gifted to the queen in 1986 and it has been a royal favorite. This tea was invented in 1875 in Ximen. And before that, green tea is the tradition in this area. Most of this tea was exported to England. This tea has its own aroma and taste, so unique that it gained its own name called Ximen Xiang, Kimen aroma. A lesser known black tea, but still won the queen's heart is in the Hong Cha, in the black tea. In 1969, Guangdong Tea Import and Export Company was informed by the uh, English ambassador that their queen used uh, in the black tea to uh, treat her guests at a grand banquet, and the tea received lots of love and a compliment. In the black tea is a relatively new black tea. In 1955 to 1956, uh, Guangdong province uh, introduced uh, Yunnan, the poor cultivar, to Guangdong. In 1959, they successfully made black tea out of this tea plant. And in 1961, they selected 22 premium tea plants, and one of which is the famous black tea that we all love today in hole number nine. Last but not the least, Dian Hong Gong Fu, Dian Hong Black Tea. In 1986, this tea was gifted to the queen when she was visiting Kunming. This tea was developed in Fengqing area in Yunnan province during 1937-1938. Mr. Feng Shaoqiu used one leaf one bud from the poor cultivar and developed this uh, very first big leaf black tea in China. And in 1939, this new tea, Dian Hong black tea, was in full production. In 1958, 
this tea was sold as the most expensive tea in the world in London tea auction. As the Queen's favorite, all these black teas can be enjoyed uh, with sugar and milk. And as the Chinese black teas, these tea can be enjoyed on its own too. Once a luxury tea, Lapsang Souchong right now seem to stand for a pretty low end tea in a lot of tea connoisseurs' heart. Uh, the one we carry is the top grade source from the family whose ancestors invented the black tea. So, and we we carry the top grade. The good thing about that is we have received many comments and uh, feedbacks that. Uh, People are like, wow, I never know La Sang Su could taste like that. Like it's a taste worthy tea. It's not the cheapest tea of the world. Uh, the only bad side is if you are those who really, really love that strong smoke, like strong ashy flavor of La Sang Su this is not the tea either because um, it's so well made, it's balanced. It has that woody, smokiness, gentle, elegant, but there's also that sweetness, the fruitiness of a black tea in it. So it's beautifully balanced and it's a really new experience for a lot of people who are pretty familiar with La Sam Su Chong. Kimen black tea, on the other hand, is much more gentle, uh, a little bit more cheerful, like a teenager. You know, fruity, uplifting, and uh, that unique kimen aroma, qimen xiang, I don't know how to describe it, but you taste it, you know it's kimen. In the black tea, in Hong number no. 9 and uh, Yunnan black tea, they have a lot in common because they are all made with uh, the poor big leaf cultivar, but they are growing in different regions, they have a slightly different process. So the taste, they what they share is that plum notes, uh, very rich, very sweet. Mm, I feel like in Hong has more a little bit more floral, less of that uh, uh, Yunnan black tea, the bite. So, uh, you know, this is not my forte. So uh, feel free to go to the website, uh, Phil did all the description uh, and he did a great job. And um, you can read there or even tell me what, how would you describe those? Well, this is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, give me a like and consider subscribing if you're also a tea lover and would like to see more of our videos. Until next time, keep steeping.